with uh, Beyond Ball. Um, I'm Tim Barris, local uh, Cleveland sports fanatic, and I'm joined by my good friend, the coach, the logo, Johnny Fadul. How you doing, Johnny? I am pumped. I'm excited. It's March, and I'm hyped, and I'm on one right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we got a we got a fun episode for everyone today. Um, you know, we're first going to talk about Otani and gambling. We're going to talk about March Madness. Um, we're going to talk about our brackets, and we're going to talk about some cool vacation spots that we like. So, you know, first and foremost, we got to get into this Otani stuff. Tell the story. And it's very rare that we start uh, this uh, pod about baseball, but we have to start here. So. Essentially, there was a wire sent from Otani to a bookie for four and a half million dollars. At first, the story was, oh, he was covering for his interpreter who ran up a high gambling debt. And Otani was being a good friend and covering for his buddy. All of a sudden, that has backtracked. And now it's that money was stolen. <laughs> Otani didn't know about this. So we have this really interesting, you know, what actually happened? Did he st- was the money stolen? Was it actually the interpreter betting? Was it Otani betting? To the point where now MLB has started investigation. So what what are your, some of your thoughts of what you've read, Johnny? Uh, it's absurd. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's absolutely out of control. But um, so for me, if you are the interpreter, um, he's saying he didn't bet on baseball. Um, actually, what was this news that just came out like five minutes well, ago? Well, he claims he was a graduate of UC Riverside in 07, and the school says there's no record Okay, of him. so now it's so getting like, to be like, do we believe anything the interpreter says? Probably but, not. But then at the same time, the story was the way you said it was, and then all of a sudden Otani said that it was theft after the fact, right? Which also doesn't add up because how do you not notice $4.5 million just leave? Right. And and also, you know, me and you have have purchased houses in the last five years. You know, we had to physically go into a bank. We had to physically authorize a wire with a sheet of paper that said, please wire this money to this account. A bank would not let someone else come in for Otani and say, you need to send this wire on my on Otani's account. And and he said so he said first interpreter. What is this dude's name? Do we know? Yeah, but I can't pronounce it. Okay. We'll call him Mimi. So we'll say that Mimi <laughs> was sitting there and uh, he said that he was playing a poker game and then he lost a million dollars and that's how it started. And then it snowballed into international like about the soccer. anti-rounder story. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. It actually is. And like, so all, um, it started off poker, ended with international sports, but that he stayed away from baseball and that his buddy covered for him. He's never going to do it again. It snowballed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, for me, dude, like this is they're going to protect Shohei Otani. You have to. We uh, th- after that, you know, like a couple years down the line, I think this is going to get brushed under the rug after like a couple months. Like people are going to try to keep it a hot topic, but then Pete Rose, the whole Pete Rose thing is going to resurface, and he might be back in baseball, which is like a feel good thing for you know a lot of well for people like me. I like I like Pete Rose. Fair, <laughs> so, fair. I mean, all time so, leader in hits. Yeah. So um. But I just have a hard time believing that Shohei had no idea what was going on and that it's just straight this dude gambled four and a half and mil no and money like, from me. Uh, yeah, and I'm just going to wire it and this dude's never going to know. And, and, and like, how like, do you just not be like, oh, you sold four and a half million dollars from me? And I, how does the guy not have a, like, a punch to the face? Yeah, like, I have no idea. I, I think the MLB, you know, they're going to investigate. They're going to follow the money. Where did it co- come from? Where did it go to? Confirm that. And then they're going to have to see what was bet on. Like, I don't know how they're going to try to figure that out. They're probably not. And they're probably just going to say there's not enough evidence. Do to... we know what happened to the bookie? Um, no. I know this. I know in Cali, online gambling isn't legal. It's not. And if this dude's getting... Four and a half million from an interpreter. Like, I clearly, you're going to see, you know, wiring. Like, I don't know who even caught them, FBI or what, but like, that's going to be alarming. So, I'm, if the bookie's like going to be a informant, right? Right. <laughs> Could we find that? I mean, that's the only way I could think of something coming well, out. Well, the Dodgers have fired him. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. The interpreter. So, yeah. So, he's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. fired from the Dodgers. So, he's not going to be, you know, in the dugout this season. But, you know, Major League Baseball. But Shohei will be. Oh, Shohei. Oh, Shohei. Will Shohei played two games already? Yes. Okay. Because you, you, what did you're going to go in and say that you hate baseball. Well, it's just stupid. I mean, it's like playing three preseason NBA games and then taking a couple weeks and then continuing the season. It doesn't really make yeah, sense. Yeah, they're trying to spread the game. And like, how? what percentage of 
we're going to veer off this, right? Yeah. So what percentage of Americans know that baseball has started? That there's been real baseball games that have been played? I would say about 20%. I would say five. Wait. Oh, well, yeah, 20% is a lot. I would Americans. say one if we're talking just straight Americans. But, like, I'm saying sports fans. Sports fans, I'm going to go 5%. Come on. I'm serious. Like, did, I mean, out of us four in this room, I don't know if three of us knew that it started yesterday. Like, you might be the only person. Like, I don't know. I mean, but it's just outrageous to me. I don't, like, get it. I just don't get it. But I guess there's 257 games, so I guess you can do whatever you want. So <laughs> Yes, it's a long season because you need yeah. large sample sizes to prove who's a good team, All and right. you need money. Yeah, I mean. Like Shohei's interpreter. It's weird. I don't know. It's weird. I, I, you got to come back with the there's not enough evidence to prove anything on Shohei. Sweep it under the rug. Move on. Baseball is lucky that, A, this, this happened in March. They did the perfect news drop when they said they were going to investigate him. They did the news drop drop Friday at 6.30 during March Madness. No one read yeah, that, that is at crazy. all. That's smart business. Yeah, that's you slick. need Shohei out there. Slick. So, <laughs> okay, so, you know, enough about your love, beloved sport of baseball. We're going to get into March Madness. I don't hate baseball like that. Like, it's getting a little better. Like, they're speeding it up. I mean, the little, pitch clock uh, helps. Yeah, it absolutely helps. And I then just, you can so, go to a game. Too. Let's not let's not start this be a thing like Johnny, the anti-baseball <laughs> guy. But, all right. Uh, brackets. I want to know, what is your opinion on brackets? Like, do you feel like... You are now too old. Do you still love it? Um, are you in pools? Like, what? What's your thoughts? Well, right now Haywood's going to the bathroom, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said it. Like... Um, I still do a bracket. Like we we did one for our office pool, um, and we I did one with some friends. But to be honest, I'm not doing five or six of them. Yeah, I'm also not doing them if it's more than ten dollars. Yeah, I check it, and I'm like, oh, cool, I had this, but I'm not living and dying on my bracket yeah. because I can have my phone out, and I can live bet anything right. I want right? So except it, for player props. You cannot bet player props in Ohio anymore. So, I mean, obviously, like, betting has kind of killed bracket play a little bit, but it's a still fun. It's, it's still, still fun. fun. Like, a big pool. Like, for me, it's kind of the opposite. Like, I like a bigger pool. I would like one entry because I don't know what no, to root one for entry. when I do 72 different one brackets. Entry, yeah. Um, and then I will say this year is probably the least I've ever spent. Like just filled it out. Never looked at it again. Didn't work out. Kentucky's in my, <laughs> in my championship game. They're out. And then BYU is in my well, elite. Your fault for, uh, picking a bad for, defensive team. Well, picking a team that doesn't, I didn't know they weren't going to try. Like, I mean, they tried the two weeks before, so that was kind of crazy defensive performance, but we'll get into that in a minute. But, um, what I think, uh, about it is like I like a big prize pool. I'm still into it. Like I love March. I think this is my Christmas. Like, this to me is the sporting event. I, I, of sporting events. I took like, Friday off of work just to watch the game. You have you had goal. three t- TVs up. Four, four. TVs. I had three up. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but you know you can live bet. I anything. mean, it's, it's the best. You've seen what has happened. It's why it's March Madness. Like it's why we love basketball. Um, we're gonna get into like a specific story, but I have something funny about the brackets with you. So the okay. one that we're in right now has a hundred and sixty-five people in it. Right? Okay. Um. My nine-month-old daughter, all right, we put blocks. It started off as notes of the teams, like one little piece of paper. Then she started eating the paper. So then we tried to use blocks with the team's colors. All right. At the end of round one, (laughs) your boy was in 160th out of 165. Where do you think she was? Oh, 25th? Third place. Oh, jeez. She's in third place, dude. So, like, it's out of control. Like, literally picking blocks. She has Clemson in the Final Four. She had Yale upset. (laughs) She had Duquesne's upset. She had Grand Canyon's upset. Like, it was just beyond me. Like, out of control. So, uh, that's, like, the fun of it, though. And I'm honored by this, but it was kind of annoying at the same time. I had five different people, like, Johnny, send me your bracket. And I'm like, trust me, you don't want this. Like, pick the colors you like. Pick the mascots you like. Do anything but use mine, because the more you think you know, like yeah. the less you're going to do, period. And it's so true. Like, I mean, I've watched a decent amount of college basketball this year, but it was more towards Marquette because my wife went there. But, yeah, the more you know, like cause the problem is you kind of will see a team that looks good for three or four games, and then you fall in love with them. Yeah. And then you don't see them play poorly. Yeah. And then they play poorly, poorly play poorly, <laughs> yeah. and they screw you. Thanks. Um, and kind of like what you're talking about, you know, we're going to talk about Kentucky a little bit, like. You had Kentucky going far. They had, you know, a solid last two weeks of the year. 
What happened? Two lottery picks yeah, on we, that squad. One of them, for some reason, like didn't even play much in the last five minutes of the game with Reed Shepard. Uh, here we go. So here's a fun thing for you that I bet you didn't know. Jack Golke, yeah, kid who hit 10 threes in the first round. Yeah. Coach against him multiple times. Yeah, he went to Hillsdale. He went to Hillsdale. Yeah, went to Hillsdale. And we beat them when they were number four in the country. I looked it up. He was three of 11 from the field. That's why you're the coach. Yeah, so then... <laughs> That's a and all and all eleven attempts were probably from three, right? That game it was, and then he played. We played him two weeks later, got our ass beat, and he kind of went off in that one. Um, he had nineteen, four of six from three, six of ten from the field. But he, I remember, like he, they just dominated well, us in that game. He had an all around game. What was interesting about Golkey is like his last eighteen games of the regular season before the tournament, conference tournament, and regular season, he only attempted four two pointers. Like everything, you want was that updated? Three. 97.7 shots he took all year were threes. He shot eight on the year. That's nuts. It's, I don't, I, there's no way that's ever been done. But, and he just made the first, uh, most three pointers in the first two rounds ever. Yeah, with 15. Yeah. And first of all, I love his attitude. I love his mindset. The way Hillsdale used to play basketball, if all their kids have his mindset, like I get why they're good no matter who the hell is in that program. Like they're, they're beasts. Um, also, like, I mean, this dude had big cat. He has his NIL deal. He's probably a millionaire overnight after that game. Um, I love this post-game presser where he's talking about, uh, you know, like, I get that I'm probably not going to the NBA, and those dudes had two NBA dudes, but I think I could play with these dudes on any given night and be the better dude, and we can be the better team, and we're not a Cinderella. Um, to, to further even say that stuff, like, I saw a meme that I was dying at because I think it's true. He was like, little does he know that Eric Spolster is drawing up 15 to 20 minutes a game for him right <laughs> I mean, now. If there's, but... anyone, if there's anyone who can get anything out of anyone, it's Spolster. I know. He culture, man. But, like, seriously, when you watch him play, if he had – I don't even think this is a weakness. It's just like a Hooper thing. Like, J.R. Smith does a little bit of this. Um, Kyrie does this. Uh, maybe even a J.J. Redick. But the way Golke plays – first off, when we're recording this, they just got eliminated. So, But the way he plays, it's like – Every shot looks like a high difficulty shot. If if I could criticize him in any way, it's that sometimes he would have an easier look that he makes almost a little more difficult yeah. because he's taken so many reps, he's so confident. But at the same time, that's what makes you a dude like him. Like you think you Because can, you can get your shot up at any time. And you're not like you know nobody's gonna touch this high release. You fell away left, fall fall away right. Like you can shoot it off a stagger, you could shoot it off a jab. Like he has the range he knows that he can make it so shout out to him i love the story i think it's so cool i think it's the epitome of why march is what it is but but on the flip side we have to talk about Kentucky we have here. to because yes Golkey had a great game but on the flip side a lot of def deficiencies showed up with kentucky i mean they, they were poor defensively all year but you know what's going on there i mean they haven't made a final four since 2014, 2015. They've only had one tournament win in the that last That one to four me years. is what's alarming. That that one's crazy. They're not getting the elite talent anymore. One tournament win in four years yeah. is absurd. Um, highest paid coach in college basketball. Yeah. Highest paid assist. I don't even know if you Orlando Antigua, I think that's his name. Their their associate head coach has a five year nine hundred thousand dollar a year contract. More than most head coaches. Okay. So He's still getting recruits, but it's like a mix of old dudes. Like you got to get some transfers. Like it, yeah, you can need some old dudes with your young guys. Like I mean, R Dillingham and uh and Reed are both projected lottery picks. Which Reed, I don't even know how. Like I said, I don't even know how much he played in the last five minutes of the game. But for me, it was like the X's and O's of that game. It's strange to me because I am not gonna like sit here and just shit on Calipari. Like I think he is. Swear jar. I think that he's a great coach. Like, I don't think he's only a recruiter. I've seen too many like little insiders where like I learn things and I'm like, oh, that's like fresh. I, I like that. And, and I've seen other examples of games where, you know, it'll be crucial moments and he just is clutch. He makes good adjustments. Obviously more often than not, he's had the talent advantage. And now it's kind of like, we're not in the era anymore where you're getting just a Derrick Rose or an Anthony Davis. Or, or even his UMass days, Marcus Camby. Yeah, like, like just a dude or two to just dominate. Um, but 
I do think he's he's not nothing's gonna happen to him this year, in my opinion. But I think he's very close to like one more year, and they might get fed up. But it's a thirty five million dollar buyout for this dude. Like you're not doing that. It's like, a lot of money. It, it's absurd. He's a lifetime contract. So I do think in Kentucky, like it's Kentucky, they're gonna get sick of him a little bit. There is no excuse to me for the defensive intensity in that game. It is crazy. You're playing a Horizon League team that you should beat by 15 20 i know it's march but like you got to find a way to win that game but it's like the effort oakland looked like kentucky and kentucky yep. looked like oakland and it's a bad closeouts bad rotations no, clearly no communication misreads on switches um getting killed like uh, on these stagger screens no jams um Golki was running free, running I mean, wide. 10 of 20 from three. I went on Synergy and I watched all 20, 21 attempts right after the game. I will argue that three of them were were not even good contests, but like allowable. Like as a coach, like I'd be happy with that contest if you're doing personnel and you know what this dude is good at. Like it's not acceptable. Like you need to be locked into this dude. He's a he doesn't even put the ball on the ground. Like make him put the damn ball in the right. ground. Right. So because he's not going to pump fake you and shoot uh, a, t- a long two or take you to the hole. Like as we talked about, he did not shoot that many twos yeah. all year. Yeah. I-, I will say if Kentucky does get fed up with them, you bring back Rick Patino. Do you take a swing like that? Let's do it. Do you that'd have, be crazy. It'd do you be have fun. the ultimate like redemption arc where Patino nice. le- leaves Louisville That's out cool. of college? That's cool. yeah. You know what? Where, where was he like? Loyal, Iona. He was at Iona. Iona. Now he's at St. John's. Yeah. The guy can still coach. Oh, he's a stud. Couple of you years. ever seen his post game interviews this year? Yeah, it is the best. He's like, I would, I'd rather die than lose three games in a row the way that we have. Like, like, like the, he's the best. Like, I love it. The dude can coach. He can absolutely coach. The the last cool thing that I uh, that I wanted to bring up about that game specifically is I don't know if you saw this, but did you see what happened to Oakland's website? Did it crash? Do you know why? Too much traffic from Louisville fans. <laughs> <laughs> That's how crazy! Like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. It's just nuts to me. But um, but yeah, that's cool. Go on. If do you got any other not uh, on that, I, I kind of wanted to transition to uh, another really impressive performance on Friday. <laughs> James Madison taking it to Wisconsin. The Dukes. I I thought they matched Wisconsin defensively, speed, and, and this is a different Wisconsin team. They averaged seventy five points. They're kind of back. This year. They're back. They're, they're kind of back, and yeah. it's the most points a Wisconsin team has averaged since 93. So this isn't the old win a 50 to 49 yeah, game yeah, Wisconsin. Yeah. And James Madison looked like the five seed. Wisconsin never got within six or seven points, and it was just domination. Yeah, um, I thought that was one of my more impressive performances. I know you have a couple. I know you want to talk about Duquesne a, a little bit. The thing I love, I mean, Day Day Grant, Cleveland kid, love it. Like, Either he's got that gene, that irrational confidence gene, like comes in the game, hits a three right when it starts. I mean, the dude would take 35 shots if, you know, like if coaching wanted him to. Like he's been playing the same way since middle school. I love watching him play. He's a dude that I've, I've We're been We're always going to root for our Cleveland guys. I, yeah, and he honestly, like, I, I'm not exaggerating like, with this. The reason I love watching him play is because he plays like Kyrie. He literally plays like Kyrie. And you, you could tell, like, the way he finishes at the rack, the way he gets his pull-ups, it's always a clean look. He's a scorer first. Um, but it was cool. They also got crushed tonight. But, like, You huge. win a tournament game as an 11 seed. That's yeah. I mean, it was beyond – to me, it was – a crazy oh you're about to say beyond again good yeah. yeah. i say it a lot I feel yeah. like. <laughs> it's just natural and then not an upset but i want to get some love to my tar heels baby you're wearing the jersey yeah they punch their ticket to the sweet 16 Dude, dominating win today they're looking good like they're doing everything they're dominating last they're hitting the three they're slashing they're guarding i'm i think this is going to be poised to be one of the best final fours just because for once in a while, and I, I'm going to bite my tongue probably in like 24 hours when these dudes get upset, but I think the one seeds and two seeds this year are kind of above where they usually are. I think, I think there's a so, little yeah. little bigger gap than the previous years, even though the parity in college basketball yeah. in general is probably as even as it's ever been. And, and speaking of a two seed, um, you know, I'm going to talk about Marquette's performance a little bit on Friday sluggish first half Tyler Kolix finally back after six games and then the second half they really took it up a notch yep. ended up winning the game by six or by 18 Cam Jones played very well offensively and their big man Ogadaro only had three points but Kolick being the engine that ball movement it's back at yeah, Marquette yeah. Um, I know on the pod I picked uh, UConn in my brackets I picked Marquette 
my heart's going with Marquette. So that that they play at noon tomorrow. So That'd if they lose one. tomorrow, what are we doing for? It? <laughs> well, you're going to Dayton. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's um, true. So uh, you know, we we talked about a lot about the tourney, but let, let's do a a little bit of a fun one. Um, you get three cities, top three cities, one international. We'll go back and forth. Um, you know. What what's one of your favorite vacation spots, Johnny? The number one pick in the vacation draft. I'm going Lebanon. We're, so if we're gonna specify a city, city, this is tough. Uh-huh. So it's between basically my dad's village and my mom's hometown. So we're going Beirut or Hamana. We're gonna go Hamana just because wow. it's it's like a, more of a small town feel. Um, it's just a village where like everybody gets along. The weather's always perfect. You might get light snow a couple times a year. Um, you're up in the mountains. It's so scenic. Uh, everybody's family. Everybody knows each other. The hospitality, the food, everything. I mean, is Lebanese amazing. food's amazing. And you're a 30 minute drive to Beirut, so it's like you don't, it, you know, you don't really have to pick. That's honestly the reason why I I want to make it a little more generic and say Lebanon because okay. then then you go to Beirut, the Paris of the Middle East, and it's uh, you know, you you got everything in Beirut. Like you got the club scene, you got a sports scene, you got um luxury like you have celebrity like you have everything in Beirut like uh when we were there I remember back-to-back nights a couple of the it was at the time the number one nightclub in the world it was like before they were uh Wiz was even Wiz like Khalifa but yeah. like you know like they they know what to do there. they they truly live with a mindset of and it's like messed up in a way but like they they live like every day is your last which I feel like is the way to live life, but <laughs> for the wrong reasons, wow. I but, but like truly like that's how they approach every single day. So it's just the most gorgeous country in my opinion, in the world. And you're on the Mediterranean sea, you got your pool bars. I could go on and on. Um, as a kid, I used to complain about Lebanese food and now and as an adult, it's all I want all day, every day. Love that place. All right. I, I mean, I'm going you have next the year. I refuse history. to say I'm not. You have, you have the a lot of your relatives are over there. That's an awesome pick. I'm going to take. I'm going to go to Europe. I'm going to go Galway, Ireland. So Galway is on the western part of Ireland, but it's only a two and a half hour train ride from Dublin. So for us Clevelanders, I'm learning. Right we now. have yeah. we have a direct flight to Ireland now. Okay. It's the only direct flight Cleveland has to Europe. Um, Galway is this really cool college town that's embedded in a 12th century feel. Uh, medieval town and the food scene is amazing i've had the best fries i've ever had there um there's also like a ton of bars where you can bar hop you're right on the water you can take a bus tour and go see the cliffs of moore um also it's the only place in ireland that has a browns backer bar so if you go during football season and you go to galway the browns backer bar is in galway uh truly ireland is such a beautiful no, we didn't go during football season. Okay. When we were originally going to go there before um, 2020 ruined the world, um, we were going to go during football season. I had the bar picked out and and everything. So Galway is is my number one international place. Sick. So domestic. Vegas, baby, Vegas. I, God, I knew you were going to say that. I mean, it's that. such an easy pick. Yeah, like, you're gambling your show, hey. So if it was... <laughs> <laughs> All right, chill out. If it wasn't, I, the only place I could even see honestly competing with it in my lifetime would be a place i've never been to in hawaii the scene in vegas now it'll be interesting because i feel like when i go with the wife it'll be like a different dynamic and a different scene but i just enter that city and it is like you're on this natural high like it is the best like the lights the experience um I mean, we can only talk so much about it, but like, are you, are you a guy where you, ha- it's 48 hours max rule or, n- or okay. I'm more? starting to get there. Okay. I'm starting to get there. We're so in our thirties now. Our first couple trips, we mostly bachelor <laughs> parties, the, the don't say. like these four or five day trips. Now I feel like we've gotten a little more intelligent and we almost have like a break day in between where we like kind of reset, okay. but in the beginning and I'm like 21, 22, 23, it's like, we were idiots like we're straight up idiots like we'd go uh cabana at the pool club during the day like go nap for an hour go to the nightclub till 6 a.m and then wake up again and go back to the cabana and then go to the sports book after that and then go back at night 
like we still do that stuff, but it's not, um, I would say like, there's just more pauses and breaks. And like, there's a place like stadium swim now, which is like a little more casual. There's just so much to do there. And it's not even just like the, the nightlife and the party, like the dinners there are incredible. Like the restaurant scene is amazing. Um, like you can, the weather is usually amazing. Like, yeah, it can, yeah, get, it can, get, it hot, can, it can get hot there, but, um, but there's pools everywhere. Like you literally just go to the pool during the hot days and then at night it's gorgeous. Um, and then you're going to run into like a couple celebs, which is always like fun to see. Yeah. But, uh, I just love that place, man. It's like the, the heart of just good vibes, like with the boys and like, you, you know, like just. It's actually funny. You talk about celebs. Um, this isn't on my top three, but. When I was in Los Angeles visiting my sister, we went out to lunch and I saw Killian Murphy at at, at to lunch. And I was like, who is that guy? I was like, I've seen you this know. guy yeah. because it was like three weeks after I saw Oppenheimer. He's a lot shorter in real life. Really? Yeah. He's probably like around five, six. Shorter than me? Around your height. Yeah. I'm tall than five, six. Bro. Five, seven? I'm a little taller than five, six. I mean, I'm five, nine. All right. I'll give me five, eight. I'll give you five, eight. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay maybe it's around your height. Um, no, that's cool. But what I'm taking for my next pick. We're gonna head down south. We're gonna to go to Charleston, South Carolina. Interesting. Um, I I absolutely love Charleston. Um, you know, you have nice beaches, warm weather. They put up a good fight in round one, by the way. Ish, yeah. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Dropped ninety plus against Bama. Yeah, it would have been nice if they like would have won and hit my yeah. bat. Yeah. Isn't pretty... Charleston legit like one of the most like prestigious, like expensive? Cities. It's not the cheapest. Yeah. I mean, um, I like, I kind of love that shit. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I love about Charleston, oh man, there's so much to love. I love the food scene. Um, you have a place, it's called Rodney Scott's Barbecue. He's been featured on shows like Chef's Table. He's considered one of the premier, um, hot, like cooking, um, ah, crap. Like, Shut, pig, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's great. Yeah. Um, you know, you have my favorite restaurant down there, Husk. It's a, a restaurant that takes um, local southern ingredients and makes amazing meals. Um, I don't eat a lot of seafood. When I'm there, I do because you're so close to That's the ocean. The best type of food on earth. So also, from a historical <laughs> perspective, it was really one of the main centers of the revolution, at least down south it was. And also, it was the start of the Civil War because you have Fort Sumter right off the coast. So, food scene beaches, historical significance. I'm going Charleston. All right, that's one for you, Johnny. San Diego. Oh. Spanish for a whales. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> no, Stay but, classy, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so San Diego, um, when I went there, I visited a buddy. It was funny because he lived with two roommates. And when I got there, he had an emergency and had to come back to Cleveland. So I was in San Diego for like four or five days by myself, just living it up. And honestly, like if I ever saw myself move out of Cleveland, like I think that would be the number one place that I would move to. Um, La Jolla, which is another place where, I mean, you got to have money. But uh, that place, man, it's like up on a mountain. Everybody's in sandals and shorts like walking their dogs, like zero people are in a bad mood. Like literally I've never Perfect weather. haven't met one person in that city in four days. Like nobody, nobody's mad at anything ever. Um, well, they, the, the Clippers moved, so they're in a better mood. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so they, um, I remember actually, it's funny. We, I was at a bar there and that remember when Kawhi, like he's out of Pachulia ran under him and he like broke his, yeah. uh, I was watching that with a ton of like, Golden State fans at the bar and like these people like I obviously being a basketball junkie like I'm watching this game like going crazy and then you just I made so many friends in this stupid little bar in San Diego beach scene incredible that uh, yeah Oscar's tacos best tacos I've ever had in my life all right had like four straight days of shrimp tacos passed out on the beach we won't talk about what led to that Got it, was just, it was the tacos. You're just so it was full. just the tacos, yeah. and then a family I, show. Literally, I <laughs> passed out so long on the <laughs> beach that I well, I stood up and could barely walk because the sunburn was so bad. Like that's how gone I was. And then I had my friend's car. Got him like parking tickets. Like when I came <laughs> back, it was like chaos. But um, but truly, like you walk out of the door in the morning and you're just like, I am a loser if I'm not happy. Like how could no, I not I, be happy right now? Like it's just, it it it's like never. 
too hot, never too cold. It's literally perfect every single day. It doesn't matter the time of year. So, okay, you brought up Kawhi Leonard. Did you see the highlight the other day where James Harden passed the ball to Kawhi and then James Harden contested Kawhi's shot? I didn't. You did not see but this. But that is making he sense to me. contested his whole teammate shot. It's making sense to me why I saw this, like, I had two different people send me a collage of Harden, and it was just like, bro, what is Harden doing? And he, then it was like 20 stupid things he's done, and it was probably one of them mixed in there, he, and I wasn't watching. He passed watching. it, and then he ran out. And did he make the shot? No, but they got the <laughs> offensive board. <laughs> that's that's kind of crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll show you the highlight after All this. Right. Um, okay, for my third, I'm between two cities here. Um, I'm between Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, one of the reasons, St. Elmo Steakhouse. Because of the steakhouse? That's the number one reason? St. Elmo Steakhouse has been around Saint since nine. Elmo. Since it's been around since 1902. Let's go. It's it was the best steak I have ever had. It was a dry aged ribeye, and I went when the Browns played the Colts. Miles Garrett was in the room next to me. That's how good it that's is. Dope. Miles Garrett's yeah, eating that's it dope. too. That's dope. Um, but I'm gonna go for my third. I'm gonna go Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Really? If you like beer? If you like cheese? If you like fried food? You're gonna love Milwaukee. Wow. It's also it reminds me a lot of Cleveland. So I think there's like that nice familiarity. That's feel. Such a hot take. That is a oh, okay. hot take. I mean, you got the the old Paps Brewery there. You got the Miller plant. You got Sprackers. So got... how much would I like it less if I'm not a beer guy? A lot less. A lot less. There's I mean, like I appreciate it. Like I get it. But like, I mean, I'd rather sit down and like have like a liquor. But then you want to go to St. Elmo's. All right. I mean, I, I mean, St. Elmo's is, was just, it's the number one or two meal I've ever had. I want to go to, I want to go there. Like, yeah. don't get it twisted. Like, I definitely absolutely want to go there. But number three? Dude. <laughs> like, it's it, crazy. The steak was pretty good. <laughs> no, I feel you. Like, I mean, I got to experience it. Like, I can't talk about it. And I've they have this famous shrimp cocktail where the cocktail sauce is really hot. And then it just goes away like that. It's, it, it's incredible. Speaking of uh, randomly indianapolis didn't we go to a colts yeah we was when our, andrew our luck was hurt hurt and then they no no no. it was when manning was hurt and uh, they were talking and to they, you and they're like well it's okay manning's hurt we're gonna lose we get yeah. andrew luck and it's all gonna be wow and we're just like this, this yeah. garbage. Oh, we have charlie fry like i don't even know who um it would have been colt mccoy i believe that's we actually stupid. won that game that's dumb yeah i think that that's was the so year dumb. we had a, that was the year after peyton hillis went off but he was still okay yeah yeah what a crazy, like, you get Peyton Manning and Andrew Luck, and we're sitting here with, like, 37 quarterbacks. Yeah. And now ours is under – we're not going to get into that. I, I still like I, – okay, if we're going to get into it, we're going to get into it. Five I, and one five is, is what you The Baltimore like. game. Yeah. That Baltimore game is what I'm clinging my hope on for Deshaun Watson. And also, you're going to have Amari, Jerry Judy, Moore, Najoku, hopefully Nick Chubb's back there. It's out there for the taking. So you're saying skip baseball season and go straight to football season we're after talking basketball. About, we're going to talk about the Guardians <laughs> next week. We're going to do some really fun props next week. Yeah. <laughs> we're, um, I had uh, one last thing with the swear jar, something that we got to think about doing. I don't know if we talked about this, actually. Um, what if me and you... See, have an episode where we just swear. Is well, no, I was that? just, I was gonna say, like, we show. we had a fun sports competition okay. that we recorded. The only sports I can even think of would be like basketball. I mean, we could do like an Olympic almost, but but I don't like it because I'm like, I don't like that like we'd be playing for the money. I like the idea of like putting it on something where like everybody no, we eats it. So, yeah, so we got to think of something else to do competitive. We also have Haywood and Nick here. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, but you know, because I'd beat you in bowling, I'd beat you in basketball, I'd beat you in eating. <laughs> you did eat like two Chipotle burritos, like yeah, the first, minutes. yeah, yeah, that's sick. pretty nuts. Yeah, you're nuts. Yeah. Uh, now what else would I? I but I'm, I'm going to get you in a golf though. I, I don't think I'd beat you in golf. I did. I mean, you might pick up a golf club and be better than me tomorrow. No, I mean it's sick. It's sick. I I think I'm the only person who like gets worse the more that I play. But I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with it. I mean, I think I think we do an episode on for another time. Like next we're week, we're doing course. masters. We're gonna do we're, masters. We're, doing masters we're gonna week. do masters. We're, we're gonna, gonna do, do some baseball. A little MLB, and we're gonna get back to the Cavs and talk about you know the post All Star break blues we've been having, and hopefully sure. guys start coming back. And uh, let, let's finish off since it's like the the month deserves it, and this might be a second last episode of March or last. I don't know, but 
Who's winning it all, dude? March Madness, well. yeah. March Madness? Who's winning it all? Marquette. So you're going to go Marquette 100% yeah. so. I'm going North Carolina. I'm going to stick with my heels. Um, I just think that, dude, like, if they – so where would they meet? Um, Championship. I think they're on other sides of the bracket. All right, cool. So if that happens, we'll have to think of something to do with that. But um, I, yeah. I mean, I love North- – I mean, back hot. Like, the experience, a big, a legitimate big. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah. All right. There it is. Well. <laughs> Shout out to the Montgomery Biscuits. <laughs> and then you got to say shoot it, baby. Shoot it, baby. Shoot All it. Right. <laughs>